remind me why we have to take this trip again. Because I have to be at the Greendale Museum for a big presentation. That's why Richard and Florence Blatz will be bringing some quartz crystals to be put on display and talk about the history of our third. Not to mention I'm scheduled for multiple interviews with the Greendale Journal and the Arthur and Times. Yeah, but why do I have to come along? I can totally take care of myself for the weekend, you know that, right? Yes, but last weekend you almost set the coffee maker on fire after spilling a cup of coffee thus making it short circuit. So, I thought it would take some extra precautions by having you come along with me. You know how I feel about this trip, do you? Nothing ever exciting happens in Arthurton. But having to go to some other town and talk about nothing happens in Arthurton is just pointless. It makes our town look bad. Besides, what am I going to do in this Greendale town? We all know exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be staying with your cousin and do some sightseeing around Greendale. Florence has also arranged for you and your cousin to go to the department stores and do some dress shopping. You need to look for new clothes to wear anyway. See, I knew you were going to say that. What are you trying to do? Torture me? Jenny. And Susan, and now you want me to suffer? She acts like a perfect princess rich girl, and yet she makes me have to go dress shopping and have tea parties with her. Sounds suspicious to me. Jenny! What kind of girl thinks that's fun? I could be doing anything else besides being around her. I'd rather get poked by a porcupine than be with her. If only I had a good case to solve, then maybe I could get out of this. That's enough, Jenny. Can you at least try to have yourself for one day? Susan's not just your cousin. She wants to be your friend. It would be great that both of you could get along with each other just once. I'm sure you and Susie will have a good time together. Sure. I'll make sure to take it to my grave. One hundred, one hundred and one, one hundred and two, one hundred and three. What is the matter? Afraid that Tobias gonna break your record? Not at all. Come on, Toby. You've got to mess up sometime. I'm sorry, Tara, but I'm worn out after all that jumping. It was worth it. Fine. Congratulations on your victory, Toby. I hope you're happy, because I'm gonna steal that record from you someday. contraption riding into the park. What is it? It looks like a bike with a coffee stand attached to it. Come on girls, let's go and investigate. Please everyone, one at a time. There's plenty here for everyone. I'm ready to get my fix. The beery here in Greenhill stinks right now, bring in that delicious coffee. Okay, but I might charge extra if you 
want more sugar cubes. Hi, sir. You seem to be doing a good job with this coffee stand. Well, that's what our motto is. The ends justify the means. Apparently, the customers here like the coffee, so I can't complain. My name's Toby, Toby Robin O'Keefe. Nice to meet you. You're not from around Greendale, are you? No, I live in a town called Arthurton. My name's Keith, by the way. Keith Strousberry. But you can call me Keith. Arthurton? That's not a town I've ever heard of. That's because our town doesn't get a lot of attention. That's where I come from. Nothing exciting happens in Arthurton. Or at least that's what people say. These are my friends, Terry and Jody. Nice to meet you, Keith. Wow, you're so tall! Do you play basketball? Actually, yes I do. I play for the Gumball Moonbeams at Gumball College. Wow, so you're in college. Me and Terry are in sixth grade, so we've got a long way to go. What about me? I'm a third grader. What's the occasion since you brought your coffee bike all the way from Arthurton? My dad thought it would be a good idea if I brought the coffee bike to Greendale to drum up some business. Everything's turning out great so far. I'm also here with my friend Jenny. She should be at the Greendale Museum right about now. There's supposed to be a big event going on there today. Now that you mention it, my dad said he had something super duper important going on today. I bet he went to the museum. Someone from Arthurton brought some artifacts to share with Greendale. That's very thoughtful of the people of Arthurton. What do you say we head towards the Greendale Museum and see what's going on? Sounds good. Hey Keith, are you going to join us? Yeah, my shift in the park just finished. Let's get going. to talk to about these crystals. I think that would be Julie LeClue. Someone call for me. Who's this? I'm Toby Robin. My name's Terry Blair. Yeah. And I'm Judy Fitzgerald, the cute one. Will, it is nice to finally meet some children here at the Muzum. You seem to be enriched, intelligent, and understanding. If I may ask, where did these beautiful crystals come from? They are not just any crystals. The technical term for them is Arthur Tonning Quartz. These quartz crystals were just discovered in the Arthur Mines by the Glass Mining Supplane Kirk. Lally donated by the Glass Foundation. Let's be. They are a wealthy family one from generation to generation have been discovering quartz crystals in Arthurton to this very day. The current owners are Richard and Florence Glass. While Richard handles the business of it all, Florence oversees most of the mining and work that goes into finding the crystals. What are you going to do with all that treasure? Well, instead of having them just sit there and wast, the Glass Foundation has also discovered how to harness the crystal's energy. So far, we are using the crystals for overhead lights in houses and buildings. 
We hope to find other properties in the crystals that are useful as we continue our research. That's amazing! Maybe one day Greendale could try that! Not a chance! The price tag for working crystals out of our third would be astronomical. Green Day is already paying an arm and a leg just to put them on display. Oh look, here comes my dad. Why, Toby, I didn't expect you to be here. I see you already met Julie. Your daughter is fascinated by the quartz crystals. I was just explaining everything I know about them to her and her friends. Well, how about you talk to me about them, and I will put your words in the Greendale Journal for everyone to read tomorrow morning. It would be an honor, Mr. Robin O'Keefe. Well, girls, I must be on my way. Take care of yourselves and enjoy the display. Wait, just one more question. We were told that someone named Jenny was going to be here. I'm afraid she's not here. She's with her cousin and daughter of the Glass family. Susan, I bet you three girls would get along greatly with the both of them. They are looking around Greendale and visiting the clothing department stores right now. And if you could provide some humility for my daughter Jenny while you were at it, that would be great. Okay, we'll head over to downtown. Thanks. I wonder who this Jenny person is. I can't wait to meet her. Me too! This will be a piece of cake. I can't believe I escaped Susan so easily. I just can't stand her! How is anyone physically about to survive around her? My mom is probably gonna hate me for leaving her alone. Meh, I'm sure she'll be fine. Wow, those cattails are huge! I've never seen anything like this! Ugh, this creek is gross. But at least it makes a great shortcut. seen the ground act like this. Why is it doing this, I wonder? Stay vigilant, Jenny. Mom always says a great detective never succumbs to fear. What the? Oh, come on! These are my best shoes! Great. My mom is gonna kill me when she sees my shoes. Okay. Now this stuff won't let me go. This is quicksand! It's a muddy type of quicksand! But it's still quicksand! at Wood River Creek. Let's go see who it is. Hey, thank goodness he found you when we did. Well, don't just stand there! Get me out of here! Calm down, lady. You have to be calm if you get stuck. Or you'll sink faster. Why didn't someone tell me that before? Why me? Why did this happen to me? <laughs> Come on, Toby! We have to help her! Yes, please help me. I would gladly appreciate it right now. No! 
No! What do you mean, no? I'm sinking over here! You keep wanting to be rude to me and my friends. You're not listening, you keep panicking. Now just relax, be nice, and say that you need help out of the quicksand. Okay, girls, pull. Hey, lady, it'd be better if you stood in the creek. The mud'll come right off. get out of that quicksand. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> no problem. That's one of the big marshes here in Greendale. You have to go around it if you want to get past. I'll remember that next time. Can I ask who you are? My name is Jenny LeClue, detective at your service. Gee, so you're Jenny LeClue. We saw your mom at the Greendale Museum. You saw my mom? How much did she talk about me? Not much. It's so nice to finally meet you. My name is Toby Robin O'Keefe, junior detective. Here's my card. Toby O'Keefe! Junior detective, available weekends and evenings after homework? I can't believe it! This car looks so professional! This is amazing! Well, I'm only a junior detective. I hope to become a real one someday. I'm just a detective in training in Arthurton. I know what you mean when you say that. I hope to become an investigator just like Mom. Exactly how many cases have you solved in... I'd probably say about 40. How are you able to do that? You would be surprised at what happens around here in Greenville. I hate to brag, but a lot of criminals are behind bars thanks to me and the efforts of my friends. Stuck in the past and no one seems to care. Where's the excitement, the sense of adventure, the feeling of danger? Hey, you know what I say, danger is my homework. I always get my motivation from mom. A great detective leaves no puzzle unsolved. Fascinating. Hey, Toby. Are you, the two of you going to keep talking, or are we going to get away from this creek? Yeah! I want to get out of here, too! Right. Let's go, everyone. Do you have a bike, Jenny? I would, but it's at the museum with Mom's car. It's okay. We'll pedal slowly and go back downtown together. Crud, I just remembered I have to get my cousin back to the museum! What, you left your cousin alone at one of the department stores? What'd you do that for? Because I got bored! You, you don't know what it's like being around Susan Glatz. She was trying to torture me with dress shopping, so I snuck out and here I am. You know that's not the right thing to do, even if you hated shopping. You wouldn't just outright leave someone all by themselves. Now we have to go and find Susie. Okay, fine. I 
just know she's probably going to accuse me of abandoning her. Serves you right. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. So I guess that means we need to know which store she's in. Not exactly. We have to eliminate the ever ones until there is one left. I'll have you know she is a big fan of pink clothes. You wouldn't happen to know which store happens to have a lot of pink clothes, do you? Of course, that store over there is called Pinkster, where almost every piece of clothing is pink. I don't know how that slipped past me. Only the obvious would be so obvious. She's probably playing mind games with us. I couldn't find her in the shirt section. I didn't see her at the dresses. I've been running in circles looking around. Maybe she went back to the museum? That doesn't make sense. Susie should definitely be in here. I really don't want to check the other department stores if we have to. What is it, Jenny? Something's wrong with that bush. The dog box loudest before the dog. Hey, Jenny, did that bush just talk? Yeah, don't worry, I got this. Ahem! The dog barks loudest before the dog! Ouch! This bush keeps poking me! CJ, I know you're in there! Come on out! Who's CJ? Is that the bush's name? I have no idea who you are or what you're talking about! What does this CJ mean? Let's just say CJ has a different way of talking to people. Let me handle it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it cook a five-course meal. Good. The wind blows strongly from the east. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. The evening sky is full of fireflies. The last donut is the tastiest. Jenny! I knew it was you! Who are you? And who are you? Jenny, who are these outsiders? The Serenia is already compromised! Calm down, CJ. They are just some friends I made in Greendale. Jenny, is this girl trying to imitate you? She looks like an imposter! No, CJ. Let's keep this introduction short. Toby, this is CJ. CJ, this is Toby. Are you also a friend of Jenny's? Yes. An esteemed colleague I also might have. That's what he wants you to think. So what does Mr. CJ do in Arthur 10? He talks a lot about alien conspiracy theories, of course. Nobody believes him. All he needs is a little bit of proof. Wait, did you say aliens? Jenny says that you're an expert on aliens, is that right? Indeed, I am. They are always watching us. They could be watching us right now. That's why I'm here in Greendale, to expose the truth. This time
tongue will know that they are watching. What if I told you that we actually had an alien right here in Greendale? You're telling me that they have been here? What did they look like? Have you got any proof? Why, if only I was here to see them in person. Are you serious? You're not serious, are you? You're kidding, right? No kidding, except it wasn't a group of aliens. It looked like a black floating monster, and he called himself Yusuka Jumba. That's fascinating. I bet you learned so much from this strange life form. Not really. He tried to attack me and Terry in the middle of the night, and then a few weeks later he almost sucked up everyone at my school. Oh my! Not a friendly visitor from another world, huh? I'll make a note of that. Aliens never come in peace. He tried to attack me and Terry in the middle of the night, and then a few weeks later he almost sucked up everyone at my school. We found out how to get rid of him with a chemical named methyl beryllium. After he drank that awful stuff, he spit all the students out. We were lucky to be alive that day. Toby, I must say that was the best alien encounter that I've ever heard of. I want to consider you as a friend. Toby, are you sure about this? Uh, Mr. CJ. You wouldn't possibly have anything left behind from the black alien, would you? All I found was a suspicious chopstick at the counters from the department stores. I got chased out by the clock after he didn't believe that the chopstick could have been a mind control device. Sadly, Yusa Kajumba didn't leave anything behind, but if he ever comes back, we'll be ready for him. That reminds me, CJ, did you see a girl in a pink dress and a blue blouse around? She's about my height and looks like a big show off. Oh, well, I, um... You mean you can't remember anything at a time like this? Well... It's just that when I was in one of the department stores, a bunch of cops tackled me and put me in cuffs. I didn't get to see who was there before they dragged me out. Oh no, why would the Greendale police do that? I had to tell them that they got the wrong guy. They caught me loose after searching me from my head to my toes. And this is the thanks I get for warning everyone about the mind control chopstick! CJ, have you seen anything suspicious since you've been in Greendale? Well, there was one thing that looked odd to me. Did you know that I saw a pickup truck in this town? No one has a pickup truck around here. It looked rather dirty, and there was a big chest in the back. Sounds weird if you ask me. I just had to find out if there was alien life in that pickup truck. Uh, Mr. CJ, did, did you see who the driver of the tea truck was? What did he look like? Oh, that I remember. He looked short and fat, and he was almost completely bald. He caught me looking around his truck and told me to back off before I give you a good slugging. I wanted to see his strange telling and devices, but he wouldn't let me. He looked like he was going to kick my keys to if I stay any longer. Did he have a thick accent? Oh yeah, his voice sounded really different. I'm not sure what an accent is, but maybe you can figure that out. What's wrong, Toby? Jenny, I know I have an STD glass. You do? What do you think happened? I'm afraid that she was kidnapped by the man in the pickup truck. And how exactly do you know that? Because that man is a criminal, and I had to deal with him before. I was talking to a criminal? I thought I was talking to a midget. Did you happen to get his name? His name is Henrik. 
he's the one that usually drives the truck. Hold on, you don't mean Henrik? Sounds more like Heinrich. It's Henrik. It's supposed to be German. He has a thick German accent. That's why his voice was different, DJ. I'm surprised that Henrik didn't say anything else to you. You look like his partner. Aha! He has an accomplice. Sounds like this Henrik is not working alone. That's where it gets worse. His partner's name is Er Doctor. He's usually the brains of all the operations. I'm sorry, is it Herr Doctor or is it just another German name? I'm not sure what his real name is, but I know one thing, they must have kidnapped Susie for some reason. Who knows what kind of torture they're putting her through. What do you think we should do? Because if I don't get Susie back to the museum, my mom is going to kill me. And then her mom is going to kill me. We have to rescue Susie somehow. My best guess is that they are holding her in the mansion far in the hills of Greendale. TJ, do you know which way the truck went? Think really hard, CJ. Do you remember anything about where the truck went? Okay. Uh, that way, I think. Alright, Perry and Jody, I need you to go back to the museum with Jenny so she can get her bike. Then, you both can stay there and wait for me and Jenny to get back. I don't want to put you two again through the same trouble. Toby, are you sure about this? You know how dangerous Herr Doctor and Heinrich are. Just be careful, okay? Jenny, Toby's done this before. I'm sure she has. I'm jealous. To me, this feels like a real case to solve. Are you coming, DJ? CJ, I can see you in the bush. No, I'm not here. Fine, CJ. See you later. Try not to annoy everyone. Good luck.